This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> no, not really. Hello fellow Novians, my name is Rob and welcome to my tutorial series. Today we're talking about basic industry making fuel. Uh, so I'm going to break this series up into different production elements. Um, but right now as a new player, I think making fuel is a great place to get started and it kind of gives you an idea of how industry works in the small scale and then you just scale it up from there. So let's get started by looking at skills. What do you need? So we're gonna look at this industry section up here. It's already open on my screen. Um, you'll need to click it. And then we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. The two skills that you need right off the bat are gonna be refiner proficiency, which as you can read here, we're level one, unlocks refiner use and its respective levels, and chemical industrial proficiency. So unlocks chemical industry and its respective levels. Now, if you want to, and you're going to be focusing on industry, you can go ahead and get all of these. Uh, as you see here, I've got all of these to level one, just so I can place them and use them. Um, even if they're on a different uh, account. So let's say I go over to my org and I want to use their refiners. Well, if I click on the refiner, it's going to say, I don't have the skill to use this. So even if you don't plan to actively participate in uh industry in order to actively use any of these machines you need the proficiency level so as these proficiency levels go up you can use uh, different uh, refiners um, and things like that so level one is a great place to get started and as i said the chemical industry and if you're going to be doing electronics or metal work or glass industry um, get all those to level one too so you can use those machines now, if you look at all of these other things, you come up here, you can also train in chemical industry proficiency, um, which gives you a minus two uh, crafting time for chemical industries. Uh, you can learn these different assembler ones, which will increase your efficiency. Um, any handling skills, which is when you put the unit down, so that can come in handy if you're boosting people's industry lines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and some, uh, what do we call them, schematics require you to actually have um, these advanced skills to use the schematics. So moving on, we'll close this out. Um, a good place to get started is going to be your nano crafter. Now I'm not saying use your nano crafter because it's not that great. I mean, if you're making tier one uh, scrap uh, or you're making tier one honeycomb just in small quantities. Sometimes your nano crafter is great. But if we hit K, we'll go ahead and open up the nano crafter. And I've already got a schematic selected here. The thing you want to make sure when using your nano crafter to look up uh, um, what do we call them? Uh, schematics or uh, crafting recipes. Um, make sure you have this unchecked, Nano Crafter only, because it won't then show you things that you can't use your Nano Crafter for. And don't click Show Only Doable. Make sure those are both unclicked. Um, so as you can see, I've already got Nitron Fuel here. If I type this in, you'll see it pops up here. Um, but let's say I wanted to learn how to make uh, doors. Uh, let's say interior door. It tells you all the things you need, right? And if I want to see how to make a basic power system, I can just click on that. And it says, oh, you need this alloy and a basic connector. Okay, so how do I how do I make an alfi alloy? Click on that. Uh, pure aluminum and pure iron. How do I make pure aluminum? Bauxite. So it'll go through all of the things. So let's go back to nitron. Nitron fuel requires pure hydrogen, pure oxygen, pure silicon, and pure carbon. So pure silicon is quartz. and pure carbon is coal. So we just need quartz and coal. Now the question is, where do I get this pure oxygen and pure hydrogen? Well, pure oxygen and pure hydrogen are byproducts, are byproducts of making pures. 
So any pure you make creates pure oxygen and pure hydrogen. And we'll talk about that in a second. But that is how you look up the recipes. Now, each recipe is going to require a schematic. So if you want to make nitron fuel, you need the nitron fuel schematic. If you want to make pure silicon, you need the pure silicon schematic. If you want to make pure carbon, etc., etc., etc. As I said, pure oxygen and pure hydrogen are byproducts, so they do not require a schematic because they just are made um, from any of these pures. So let's close this out and look at the machines themselves. So in order to make fuel, as I said, you need pure carbon. We'll look at that again, right? And pure silicon. You can only use one machine to break down one pure. So these refiners take the raw products and make them into the pures. Now, I don't know why the devs called this a refiner and a smelter uh, is actually in the game and does something completely different. You would think smelting ore would make pures, but it's not refinings how you make pures. So if we go ahead and open up this machine by clicking F to activate, we can see that this is already set for pure silicone and it tells you its components are quartz and its products are pure silicone and pure oxygen. So how did we get to this point? Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop this machine. Let's stop it. And we'll go back to the basics here. Let me set my linked container to be primary. So I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to take, let's stop this machine. I'll take the schematic out. And we'll go ahead and stop this machine. And I'll take this schematic out. So by default, when you put these machines down, so let me go ahead and pick these up so we can get started from scratch. So I need to go into build mode. I'm going to go ahead and pick these up so we can get started from scratch. So the first thing you need is going to be three containers. They can be any size of containers for now at, at this point and the amount of materials that I run. Um, just for fuel every once in a while is uh, large containers. Some people like the uh, extra large expanded containers if they're going to be making a ton of product. Um, and you can see on some of my other lines, I'm just using medium containers because I don't make a lot of product and I don't have a lot of overflow. So larges work just fine. And uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and select the refiners. And we're going to put this down wherever. I like to keep it lined up with my other refiners. So let's put this one here. And we'll put this one here. And we'll just put the uh, chemical one. All right. I'm just going to put it upside down here on the ceiling so it doesn't take up too much space. It'll clip through the floor, but, you know, whatever. Right there. All right. So... The first thing you need to do, we're going to click on it, and you're going to see it says no active schematic. Well, that's where the schematic comes into play. So we're going to open up the schematic blank. This is my inventory. This is the schematic bank on the refiner. And for this one, we're going to make pure carbon. So you see I went to the market and I bought this pure carbon schematic. Um, some markets have different schematics. Some schematics, the more rare ones, you can only find on like the outer planets in the system, and they're very expensive. Uh, I think a bonsai tree is like a $300 million schematic. Don't ask me why, but it is. So we have the pure carbon set up. Once that's in there, I can now click on schematic selection. And if I wanted to, I could drop all of these schematics in here, but you can only use one schematic at a time. So if I put the pure silicon schematic in here, and then I went to schematic selection, you can now see I have pure carbon and pure silicon as a selection. Um, we're going to go ahead and take the pure silicon one back out. And now you see that I have only the pure carbon there. So we're going to click on pure carbon. We're going to click apply. And that sets it as your current pr product that you're producing. And you can see here, 
that it requires coal on the input and its output is going to be pure carbon, pure oxygen, and pure hydrogen. So you see what I was talking about, about the output and the overflow of uh, oxygen and hydrogen. So for every pure carbon I make, I'm going to get 52.5 liters of pure oxygen as well. So down here, you have your production mode, you have run, you have make, which is limits it to a certain amount of batches. So if I say make five, it's only going to run five batches and then it's going to stop. If I select maintain, then it's going to look into the output container and see how many are there. So if I said mm, eight, as soon as this output container hits eight, it's going to stop producing. So that's different ways you can use it. Um, I just keep it in run uh, all the time. Uh, that way, as soon as I put materials into the raw container, it'll automatically run through and then it'll just stop when it runs out of materials. Um, so you can see down here, my input says connect a container. You can have four different containers feeding one machine, but you can only have one output. Um, so that in mind, so we're going to activate this one. We're going to come over here, drop our pure silicon schematic in here, schematic selection, pure silicon, apply. And that's that. So I'm going to hit start here. Oh, error missing can input containers. Okay. So that means I got to connect containers. So it's going to tell you if something's wrong and we're going to go over here and we're going to put the nitron fuel schematic in there. Same thing. Schematics collection. Apparently I can't talk today. Nitron fuel apply. So you got what you need and what you'll get out of it. So you'll get 300 liters uh, for one batch. Now we're just going to make that on uh, run infinite as well. So how do we get this started working? Well, let's go and open up our linking tool and take a look. I have these containers labeled, so they should pop up. Yep. Uh, container large, it just says container large. Apparently I did not label these containers. Um, let me see. Okay, so this is probably my input container. We'll just call this my input container. And let me actually go ahead and name this. We're just going to rename element and call this fuel raw. And that'll change the name of the container there right here to fuel raw. All right. All right. So we're going to link that to both of these machines. So we're going to link actually remove my outlinks okay so we're gonna go ahead and link this to this machine and this machine why is that because I want both machines to pull from here now if I was gonna dump a ton of materials then I could have a separate tank for um, silicone um, which is the the quartz and I could have a separate container for the uh, coal if I was just gonna fill them up and uh, just walk away. But I don't make enough fuel that I need to use two containers, so I'm just gonna use one container for both. And that one container is gonna feed both these machines. Now, once these machines are linked, you can see if I click on this and I click on here, no compatible link type found. You can only output to a container, and then that container needs to go to the next part of your assembly line. Um, and there are like conveyor belts and, and sorters and all kinds of other things that to take into account here. But we're just going to be talking about basic, basic fuel production. So we're going to link both of these. And your link direction is important. So you can see I clicked on this at two here. So that's because I'm having my material come from here to the refiner. Now I want it to go from the refiner to the container. So I don't want to click on the container first. Otherwise, it's going to look at that as an input. So we're going to click that. And you can see my arrow is now flowing to that container. So if I hold control, you can see all my links. So you can see both of these machines are being fed by this container, and they're both outputting to this container. So what's my last point? Well, now I have to come from this container that's going to have all my pures in it. 
And if I open this up, you can see I have pure oxygen, pure hydrogen, and some of this already manufactured. I'm going to select this container and send it to my uh, chemical industry, uh, my chemical industry media. So let's look at the links. It comes from this container to the refiners, from the refiners to this container, and from this container to the fuel industry, or the chemical industry. Um, and now my last step is to take it from the chemical industry to this last container here, which is going to be my fuel storage container. So if we come over here, you'll see that I already have a bunch of nitron fuel in there. And now all we're going to do is we're going to click start. It's going to say missing input component because that input container is empty. But we'll go ahead and click start on all of these just so it's going. This one's actually going to start running because, as I said, there's uh, materials in that large container. So what we have is these two are processing the raw materials into peers. And then this takes those peers and makes them into fuel. And that is pretty much how all of that works, right? So this is just going to run until it runs out of uh, mat raw materials. Um, but let's go ahead and open up this container. I'm going to drop in this quartz and this coal, and you'll see both these kick on. And a good indication is a green light on these machines, which means I am now running. If it turns to a yellow light, it means that it's missing product, um, so it's jammed. If it turns red, it means something's wrong, like it doesn't have an input container linked or it doesn't have an output linked. So that is basic fuel uh, refining. And if I go upstairs, I'm going to go upstairs. You can see I have another step that I'm just going to show you. And this is for my ease of use, but it's, uh, it's important to touch on real quick. I have this wall here so I can just land my ship on this pad and I can drop all of my, uh, coal and quartz into the coal and quartz container. And I can just come here and pick up fuel. I don't have to go downstairs and get it. Um, but when we add these container hubs, we have to worry about a different issue. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and unlink all of these. And all I'm doing for that is right clicking with the... I can leave that one alone. I'm um, right clicking with the link tool open. I'm going to remove in links and then removing it. And that's how you get rid of a link. Um, if you, if you move your mouse off, you, sometimes you have to go out of build mode and back into build mode. And now you'll see that there is no link there. Um, sometimes it takes a minute to update the fact that you just removed your links. So now what I'm going to do in this step is I'm going to link this container back upstairs. For ease, let me cut a hole in the floor. Okay. So we're going to go up here. I'm going to select this first container. I'm going to send it to uh, this one, which is my fuel drop off. And I'm going to connect this container to my fuel pickup. So what happens when you link to a container hub is that the container hub is now that container. So if I try to link this container to this, you can see it's not working. I can't link it. Nope, won't let me. And you might be going, crap, is the game broken? I can't link. Well, the reason for that is that this container is no longer the master container. The master container is now the container hub. Where's my hole? Uh, right. So if we go up here and we select this fuel quartz coal drop off. So now I can select this and send it here. And I'll select 
this and send it here. And the reason for that is because this is no longer the active container, that is. Same thing with this, I can't select my output to that container, it just won't let me. You see it's, it's not allowing it. But I can select this chemical industry and send it to my fuel pickup here. So, boop, there. So again, I know it's kind of confusing, but these become the containers when you link to them. So if you're gonna use container hubs, just remember that this is now your container. So if you're having issues trying to link, it's probably because you linked to a container hub and you need to link the container hub to the refiners and not the other way around. So I'm gonna make sure this is hooked back up, yep. And the reason I'm still linking to this container is it's not linked to a container hub because I don't need to access it from up there. All this container is doing is taking my raw ores and making pures. And since I don't need to access the pures from on top uh, for my fuel line, I just link directly to the container instead of a hub. Now, if I wanted like three or four containers to handle my, um, my pures, and I link that to a hub, I would have the same issue. I would need to link all of these. I would need to link the container to the hub and then my hub to my chemical industry. And then all of these would need to link to the hub. All right. Well, I hope that's not too confusing. I know I just threw a lot of information at you. I'm just going to backspace to get rid of that hole there. Backspace does not undo links, so easy way to do links is just to cut a hole in something, do all your links, hit backspace, fill the hole back in. And that concludes this tutorial. If you like the video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up there. Uh, drop a subscription if you'd like to continue following along with this tutorial series. Next time we will talk about industry starters and making honeycomb don't forget to like and subscribe as i said already and uh, hit that notification button if you want to be notified every time i drop a video it does help out all of your content creators if you like somebody's video go ahead and subscribe it doesn't hurt only takes a minute and give us a great boost in confidence that we are doing something that you like otherwise i will see you in space stay safe out there